How's it going everybody? My name is Swanee and welcome back to another video. Guys, last episode was very intense. Made me sick to my stomach actually a lot with Keith getting the crap beaten out of him. Aaron just absolutely dogging on Mikasa. Pause? Nah, but like dogging on Mikasa and Armin and saying how he's not free. And then he says if there's, you know, one thing I hate more than anything, it's people who aren't free. And he pretty much just said that Armin... Anyway, I'll get to it in a minute when I do the notes. Uh, I am going to do a little bit of a recap. Just the last episode was... It was just, it was just hard to watch, especially with Lee. Anyway, whatever. I'm just going to let that segue into the notes, which is Armin and Mikasa not being free. So Aaron makes the point that, you know, Armin is being controlled by the enemy because he has Bert's memories, which honestly is pretty crazy. I didn't even think about that when I was watching it. And when Armin was talking to Annie's Crystal, I actually just thought it was a, a clever way for Isayama to pretty much tell us what's been happening in the past three years, you know, how we came to know Marlians and pretty much, you know, what the deal is. But it's actually a lot deeper than that. It's the the fact that he's got Bert's memories and Bert had a crush on Annie. So now Armin kind of has those feelings, which is really strange to think about. It's really weird to think about if you had someone else's memories and they had a significant other and you had their memories, then you would then have feelings for their significant other, which is pretty wild. And then Aaron brings up the fact that Mikasa's like inner power awakened when she mistook Aaron for being the hosts of like, anyway, basically the Ackermans are supposed to be, you know, the vessels to protect the king. And when faced the life and death situation back in her childhood she had that power awaken when she saved Aaron and now you know which was so wild to see when Armin went to go punch Aaron just instantly protect Aaron she had Armin's arm pinned behind his back and when she kind of let go you can see it in her eyes that she did it purely based off instinct which tells me that what Aaron was saying was true but the thing that I just can't believe is how He's always hated Mikasa. Uh, that just, I couldn't wrap my head around that. And it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense because that's not the Aaron we know. And that's when, you know, what Premier Zachary said and what Mikasa said, how Zeke is manipulating Aaron. I, I think Zeke is just like funneling all this information, just telling him all this extra stuff just because he knows a little more about Titans. Supposedly, Zeke is really knowledgeable. And, you know, Aaron is our young, impressionable protagonist. And I'm thinking whatever Zeke's plan is that he told Aaron. You know, Aaron's just kind of is going all in. And at this point in time, he needs control. So he's rebelling against the group that is, you know, putting him in prison, right? And it just so happens that Mikasa and Armin are on the other side. It's pretty much the Jaegerists versus the law. You know, they kind of have to go outside the laws in order to get their task done. But I don't think the way they're going about it is exactly right. Um, which is actually another note, which is Phlox methods. I'm not entirely too comfortable with how Flock is going about things. He basically pulled up on Keith and the recruits and pretty much was saying, you know, if you guys actually want Eldia to be free, follow me and, you know, forget what this guy's saying. As a matter of fact, to prove yourself worthy, you know, or to prove yourself, however, you know, beat the hell out of Keith. And they did, which was really sad because, you know, that kind of goes back to the bystander episode, you know, showing that Keith was nothing special and you know, his role in everything is is pretty much nothing. But Keith did say one thing that I actually really liked, which was, you know, no one ever cared what your group had to say until you pulled a gun on him. And that was pretty baller, to be honest. I mean, you know, despite Keith not being quote unquote special, he's definitely proven himself to me and I respect the hell out of him. And it was just sad to see him get beaten up like that. But, but yeah, I'm not too crazy about the methods Flock is taking. So I have Armin Mikasa not being free. Jaegerus gaining control. Yeah, the Jaegerus are pretty much overthrowing uh, the law right now, which is really wild to see. I mean, again, what Pix has said, it's not like you can fight against them because, you know, that's just a shit ton of bloodshed and it would really just be a waste. And the infighting would be the true downfall of Paradis. So, you know, you really kind of do have to chase after Aaron once again. That note was actually props to Keith and Flox Methods. Uh, Levi rematch. Oh my God, dude. Okay, <laughs> so the spinal fluid was in the wine. It got into Falco's mouth. He felt the buzz from it. And no, I'm not talking from the alcohol. Uh, Zeke's shout, which by the way, dude, that range, the fact that, you know, I'm assuming because they're in the forest or they're in the woods and, you know, back from season one from that, the female Titan arc, you know, that, that's a pretty far ways away. And the fact that Zeke's scream or shout could reach that far. I mean, no, they didn't transform, but like they felt that, that lightning, I think is what Falco said. They felt that lightning inside them. Oh my god, dude. Um, <laughs> Falco's just gonna have to play keep away 
We're just gonna have to keep Falco as far away from Zeke as possible because, dude, the only way I see this working out is if Zeke dies or he gets eaten because, you know, I care for my boy Falco and, you know, Zeke is, is the whole manipulating thing and it's just a whole lot of bloodshed and I'm not too crazy, like, you know, the ends justifying the means. I'm not too crazy about all of the chaos that's happening. But like I said, you know, it's got to be a damn good plan. Like, I don't know what the plan is. So, I mean, but to justify everything that's been happening, dude, I don't know, bro. This is, I, I just, I just want to know what the plan is. But to save our boy Falco, Zeke is going to have to die or get eaten. And if Levi can just keep him where he is, damaged, you know, with a thunder spear in his gut, which is so crazy, by the way. I never even thought about putting a thunder spear inside the body and having it heal around it, which is pretty crazy. And, you know, he's got a rig to blow if he moves, so... You know, I don't really see, I don't, I don't see, Ze I don't see Zeke going anywhere anytime soon, especially with Levi on watch. Oh, yeah, the rematch, dude. It's so sad that at this point, I feel like Levi just knows that, oh, new comrades, you'll probably die soon. And I'm just going to have to watch it and I'm just going to have to live through it and bear through it. And it's just going to happen. I think, I don't know if it was after like the 20th or 25th comrade that that happened to, but Levi has to be extremely calloused because... I mean, he is. I mean, the way that he was dropping, you know, in that frame with all the Titans around him, he just kind of, he just looked dead inside. And, you know, I feel for him a lot. And I honestly think it stings even more the fact that he allowed the wine to be on the mission. Which, by the way, Levi, if you were in charge of that, bad call, man. I know you want your comrades to have a good time, but you got the Beast Titan. You are watching the Beast Titan. Alcohol should be nowhere in the mix, man. And especially if wine is an imported good from Marley and you guys are, you know, technically enemies. Why would you... Bro, I wouldn't... I wouldn't trust that for a second. But especially if Yelena, who's also sketchy as hell, is in charge of, you know, the wine and staffing Marleyans in restaurants or wherever. Um, yeah, it's just a recipe for disaster, and that's exactly what's been happening. It's just been, it's just been chaotic. Yeah, it wasn't much of a rematch. Levi had the environmental advantage. You know, the trees are perfect for ODM and terrible for Zeke. And like I said a couple times before, I wasn't surprised when he got, got the first time because, you know, it was buildings and he's on the forefront of the battlefield where he should be on the back throwing. So the fact that he was in close quarters with Levi in a forest, I mean... Yeah, I, I, I could have predicted that Levi won. But yeah, that actually leads to my last note, which is Zeke looks terrible. Dude, he looks awful. I went back and watched it, and his face is, like, skeletal. You know, he has, like, what looks like... I'm sure this joke has been made a hundred times, but, you know, a pepperoni pizza. He look, he had all these, like, you know, circles on his body, and he just looks terrible. So, yeah, it wasn't much of a rematch, but at least this time it was legit. You know, there is no you know, extra backup plan or whatever. There is no backside manipulation. It's It was just Levi versus him. Super wild episode. Something about Zeke shouting and having all the Titans transform at once. I think one of my favorite moments from the show was when Erwin was giving the commands on top of the wall. And at this time, we didn't know about the shout, but you just saw the whole line of lights just the whole line of titans just shoot up and he's giving the order with his back turned completely normal and once all those lights start you know glowing and happening and all the thunder and all the sound and he just turns around in shock because that's just that's just something that he couldn't calculate and the fact that erwin couldn't calculate it and it was like such a surprise like we had such dominance and then all of a sudden the whole line of lights go i'm never gonna forget the full body chills and yeah the way that the camera turned with like erwin looking over his shoulder and all you see is his eyes and he's just like in shock Dude, that scene was done so beautifully, and I, it was just so fluid, and the way with the light, oh my god, dude, that's actually one scene I go back and rewatch a lot, because it just, it hits, man, I don't know if you guys feel the same way, I'm not even sure if that's a, a popular scene or frame, but something about that just, Erwin being surprised, just an absolute galaxy brain commander, you know, great at his job, had every single calculation in check, and then all of a sudden you just see a whole line of titans just spawn. It's like the sky went black because the light was so bright, and just the whole dynamic, yeah, with his back turned, I can go on about it forever. That that scene gives me chills, I love it. But yeah, these last two episodes have been, you know, not like fight action, but like, Things unfolding, like, you know, catalyst episodes, where the tension is extremely high and I'm on the edge of my seat the entire time. I honestly can't wait for this next episode. I think that's plenty of enough of a recap. With all that being said, I'm ready to get into it in the next episode, which is Soul Salvation. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Okay, so we got Grisha and Dinah.
ルディア人か。ああ、メン。何を私たちは外国を持っているのですよ。俺はこの塔の戦争に汚れを落とすのが仕事だ。It's crazy how cruel people can be. We'll see about that. Must be a hell of a plan. Zeke? Wow, so he's an underdog. <laughs> Social dance club? Restorationist meeting, more like. Oh, uh... so this is where Zeke got his other ideals. Yeah, read him something, you know, a kid should read. Come on, man. Like, these guys were... These kids were stripped of their childhood. Wow, Commander Magath, looking young. Also, to be fair, assembling a rifle is pretty hard. Yeah, contradicting history. Okay. <laughs> yeah, a real good arm. Yeah, that's what I thought. Tom, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, he's a he's a real good pitcher. That's so much pressure to put on a kid. What's his dad's approval, man? Yeah, that'd be a researcher's dream to get all the memories of a Titan. Yeah, that would be crazy. Yeah, it's like infinite knowledge from like infinite memories. Yeah, this guy seems cool. Tom. I like Tom. Yeah, it's Come on, Grisha. What did you learn? No one will be able to get out of the way. Everyone will be able to get out of the way. That's it. Oh my god. Oh, he's going to get out of the way. Oh, 
僕はフェイおばさんみたいになってもいいのチーカそもそもフェイが殺されたのはこの Bro, they gotta remember this is just a kid! Oh my god, dude. Wow! He told Tom! Oh. Wow. It was Tom's idea. Yeah. It definitely seems that way. Wow, a little time skip. Oh, yeah, he's coming to an end. Oh, that's Wow! Dude, that's insane. Oh my god, dude. Dude, that's insane. I mean, しかし、いつまでも騙し通せるわけもな。私がエルディア人だと知った妻は、自分と息子の喉を。Oh my God! Wow. Wow. So is that what Zeke wants? Because he's got real blood. Mm. Okay. Wow. Oh, okay, that makes so much sense as to why Zeke is so knowledgeable. It's because he now has the memories of <laughs> pretty much a researcher who only strove for knowledge. Makes sense. Wow. Wow. Wow! Wow, that comes full circle. Damn! Damn. Oh my god! Wow! I knew, I knew that he felt that like emotion, but to feel it like physically. Okay. 
<laughs> that didn't take a whole lot of convincing. I thought. <laughs> I thought Zeke was just gonna have to basically manipulate him and like drill it into him, but he pretty much just said, Are you on board? And he was like, Yeah. Wow, I actually really like that flashback. Oh my god. Oh my god. Levi, bro, are you joking? If Zeke's alive from having a thunder spear inside him explode, then the, the show's rigged, bro. There's no way Zeke should be like, dude, a thunder spear, an explosive in your stomach exploding. You should be, you should be done. You should be done. If he's alive, dude, I have, I just have a feeling he's going to be alive just because plot armor. I don't think Zeke's dumb enough to do that knowing that he died because, I mean, there goes his whole entire plan that he just sacrificed so much for. But he should be dead. <laughs> I feel like if he's alive, that's insane plot armor. I mean, there, I'm sure there's a reason or some science behind it as to how he's still alive. And I'm sure I'll figure that out soon. But if he is alive, I'm not crazy about it. Just because an explosive thunder spear in your stomach exploding and you're still alive. Like, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I, I feel like that's just crazy. No shot, Levi's dead. There's no way to kill him off like that. In the end, two seconds, what? He cuts up the beast titan, a thunder spear in his gut, which should kill him. Kills Levi? Nah, no way. I, I I refuse to believe that that's how Levi goes out. Such a well-written character up until now dies like that? I don't believe it. I don't believe it. All right, so I'm dying to get into the next episode, but I'm going to do a little bit of recap. Grisha. First off, Grisha, why? Dude, stripping Zeke of his childhood, having him build that resentment against you, got you killed. Well, I mean, I guess it inadvertently got him killed, but... Zeke pretty much snitched on him. He got sent to paradise. And, and you guys know the rest of that origin story, but had had Zeke and Dinah been a little more, I don't know, caring? Had, had they actually, you know, cared for him and given him a childhood, maybe that could have changed. But it's been made very clear that Eldians and Marley do not get a childhood at all. Uh, so yeah, I have Grisha, Tom. Tom's a cool guy. I like Tom. He seemed cool. Uh, the story about his wife and kid was really sad. Uh, wasn't expecting, wasn't expecting that at all. And they even showed a visual with the wife and the kid and a knife. And you guys, some I mean, of you guys seen it. You guys know. Uh, pretty messed up. Just because he's an Eldian. Um, I like the idea of him being a researcher and having him take the Beast Titan was just, what do you say, grandiose? A grandiose way to, you know, unalive himself. Which also explains how Zeke knows so much because Tom was a researcher who also gained all the knowledge from the Titans before, so he's got like this infinite resource of knowledge. So it only makes sense that Zeke is so knowledgeable about Titans and everything like that, the glasses. We now, we now see where he gets the glasses from. He got it from Tom, which, you know, to be fair, Tom's a cool guy. He, you know, honestly, he was more of a father than Grisha was because, you know, he played catch with them. You know, he cared for him. He's like, dude, you know, you got to snitch on them because, you know, you're going to get sent to paradise with them if you don't do something. Like, I, you know, I care for you. I mean, obviously he cared for him. Like, you know, he was he would throw cash with them. So Tom was definitely more of a father figure to Zeke than Grisha was. And my next note being the founding Titan can actually alter like a human body, which is pretty cool. Tom saw a memory of Eldians, you know, being plagued with disease. But he said the founding Titan altered their genealogy to be able to withstand the disease, which is really cool. So the founding Titan can actually do that, which is where Zeke got the idea of the euthanization plan. And how I feel about that, I mean, I understand the approach of, you know, preventing suffering, prevent, you know, I, it's tough, right? It's like, what's the, you know, you know that kid's gonna suffer. The world sucks. It's a cruel place. There's a lot of hatred, a lot of revenge. It, it, it's shit. The world is terrible. So, you know, even today, you know, there's that argument is, you know, I don't want to have a kid because they're gonna, you know, have to suffer in this world. But also at the same time, like, you don't know. It's like pressure and heat makes diamonds, right? So when you suffer and you're put under that heat and you have the pressures of life, you know, 
you have the choice to either crack and just become a rock like everyone else or have that heat and pressure mold you like a diamond but also at the same time this is attack on titan it's a completely different prompt you know you have titans you have eldians who can you know become titans monsters you know so i can see the angle where if you were to just end the Eldian race through, you know, a euthanization plan, then it would prevent them from ever being born. Technically, you're not killing anything, but you're also ending an entire race. Like, you're ending a line of people, which is... I don't know. I think that's why this is such a good show is because it is different, right? If this was real life, no, I don't think we should euthanize a race just because we don't like them or we see them as a threat or whatever. But it's different in this scenario because we're talking about Titans and it's just it's just different. But I'm also I'm just not crazy about euthanization plan. Just not. I understand the euthanization plan. You know, it's smart in terms of you're not having to kill anybody. There's no bloodshed. You're simply altering a gene that prevents a kid from even being conceived, right? There's no like option for a kid if the Eldians were to be altered with the Founding Titan. So, you know, in terms of, in terms of, you know, a, of a non-violent solution, like I get it, you know, that makes sense that, you know, and I can see how from Zeke's perspective, that could be an admirable goal. But like I said, I don't know, I just think there should be another option. And my last note being find Aaron. So we have Reiner and Bert talking to Zeke. He's like, hey, we got this kid. His dad was a doctor. They're in Shiganshina, you know, go find him basically. And Zeke is like, oh my God, you know, a doctor, that father, oh my God, you know, Aaron, I will come rescue you. So now I understand what he was saying when he's like, all right, Aaron, I'll be back to rescue you back at the end of season three. And it also makes sense how he was saying how he's brainwashed Aaron too. You know, at the time we didn't have Grisha's origin story or any of this information so you know I, I wasn't buying it but it makes sense now at least you learned after the first time you know maybe you shouldn't put that kind of pressure and negligence on a kid and just not approve uh, and push him away basically because I mean Zeke was given his best out on the training grounds and you know Dinah and Grisha were watching and just turn away in disappointment. It's like, how can you do that to a kid? Not only a kid, but your son. Like, I don't know. I just don't, I just don't understand. But with Reiner and Bert talking to Zeke, it was at that moment that he realized he had to go find Aaron. And he did. He found him. And yeah, I honestly thought Zeke was going to have to manipulate him and actually like drill in his ideas into Aaron. Go to Mikasa. Go to Armin. Tell them that you hate him. You know, you don't want anything to do with their side anymore. Come join me on my plan. And, you know, Aaron resisting a little bit. That was what I thought. And then he goes... Yeah, so I got this euthanization plan. What do you think, Aaron? He's like, yeah, sounds good. Which was honestly a little bit surprising. Was expecting a little bit more of a, a pushback from Aaron, but I mean, he's changed. So but yeah, I mean, that's all I have for my recap. I'm dying to get into this next episode. I hope you guys all enjoyed. I have the full reaction on Patreon. I also have a Discord. Both of those links will be in the description below. If you guys enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing. It would be greatly appreciated. Guys, I'm so hyped to get in this next one. Um, yeah, that's kind of it for this one. So I hope you guys all have a good one.